Now, I'm not trying to rush or anything. It's just I'm going to refrain from giving an introduction this morning. Because of the lesson I did before this one, it took away. The introduction in the last lesson just took up a lot of the 15 minutes that I have on this recording app. And plus all the lessons on the entire book, every verse of Galatians can be found in my playlist if you need to be caught up to speed. So let's dig into Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. And I'll start in verse 13. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law. But they desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Verse 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. Now, prior to the coming of Jesus Christ, physically walking and talking, ministering amongst humanity, before the Word became flesh, existing among man in the world, the authentic act of circumcision was a sign. It was a seal, a seal of commitment, a physical mark on the male's body as belonging to God in submission as one of his chosen people. Now, why females were not is a lesson for another day, but I did touch upon it in several lessons in chapter 2 and chapter 5 of Galatians. But circumcision before Christ ministered as prophesied on earth was a sign. It was a seal that was given to Abraham by God himself. Now, circumcision, well, Paul says, and I quote, not even those who were circumcised keep the law. In verse 13 and in this morning's verse 15, I quote him, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. Now why is that? That the outward conformity and religious symbolism of circumcision avails not, is of no use. Paul stated in chapter 5 verse 2, now I, Paul, say to you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no advantage to you. Circumcision was just a mark, an old covenant seal that one has given themselves in total submission to the living God as a chosen people. And in the new covenant, we have Christ Jesus, that the mark, the seal, that one has given self in total submission to Jesus Christ as an evidence, as an evidence, a mark, and a seal of Christ chosen would be in that person, the identity of fruit of the Spirit. Now, the circumcision that Judaism was peddling all throughout Galatia, it was no more than a branding. It had significance in the Old Covenant. It did. But as Judaism, when since Christ came, the way that they were trying to sell it amongst the Galatians, it was no more than a branding. Kind of, kind of like the way today people trademark themselves to whom they approve of or to whom they represent by branding themselves for all to see. Air Apostle, Ford, uh, Nike, Carhartt, John Deere, Mossy Oak, Yeti Coolers, you see? It's just a branding. When Christ came, it was just as that. A branding. So it was just a branding. This circumcision. That avails not. Not one thing. And the, campa the campaigning 
of circumcision for salvation was the heresy roadblocking salvation in Christ alone by Judaism throughout Galatia. Now, if Paul, throughout the letter to the Galatians, persuades them to not hold stock in this cutting off of skin, branding, because it avails nothing, then what does? What does? Verse 15 again. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but a new creation. A new creation. I tell you, many, many, numerous articles, years and years of books, hours upon hours of sermons can be written on the telltale sign, the character trait of just what a new creation is. And I'll give you a hint. Paul said it in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. And this verse echoes this 15th verse in this morning's study, in verse 15. It echoes it. Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Faith and love. Now, not the emotional, the emotional love you get while holding hands for the first time at the skating rink. Not that kind of love. Come on now. It's, well, what is faith? Let's start with that. What is faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 tells you, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. See, faith in Jesus Christ, it's faith, it's in the spiritual realm. Not in anything you can comprehend in the physical realm with the five senses. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So faith... Faith in the Savior of mankind is the internal power of desire to love and harbor the identity of fruit of the Spirit. That is a new creation in one's being. Now all of the law, all of it, is fulfilled in love. If you love one another, you're fulfilling the whole law. Love overcomes the ten moral commandments. Think about that. Go through the commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. If you love, see what I mean? Think about that. See, Jews required signs, things they can see. The Greeks, they, they required reputable wisdom and teachings of philosophy for evidence of something to believe in. But believers in Jesus have his spirit confirming that the faith that cannot be seen is indeed there. See, believers in Christ, they have navigating internally in their life the Holy Spirit. Unbelievers, well, they have an internal form of navigating as well. Science calls it the conscience. Now that we have determined circumcision for the Galatians per Paul, null and void, let's conclude this new creation identity and read Galatians chapter 6 verse 15 again for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation a new creation a new creation is something extraordinary over old covenant circumcision Paul is saying now what exactly does he mean Paul tells us in writing to the church in Corinth, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Paul, Paul is ministering in an extraordinary era in the world. 
in his letter to the Galatians. Not only has he witnessed the old things of the old covenant pass away, but he is actively part of the new covenant. Now someone may be visible thinking that they're in Christ because they attend church, but they are, they're spiritually not in Christ. So I'm a, I just don't have enough time to finish this. I'm going to do a whole other lesson on a new creation in Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. Next lesson. Because I can't rush this. We barely scratched the surface of what Paul meant by a new creation. So we're going to thoroughly go over the new creation next lesson. Till next time.